Ladies and gentlemen, boys and <laughs> girls, welcome to episode 91 of the Speared Sundays podcast. Um, <clears throat> uh, it is, I'm recording this at 9.30 at night because I've been asleep all day. I had my comedy special last night and Friday night and... Uh, wasn't planning on doing a podcast um, because uh, I just woke up this morning absolutely fucking wrecked. I think like the the, uh, the the three hours, three years of work that I've been putting into this thing finally hit me um, just just like last night and today once the comedy special was over and I was like, shit, I can actually stop uh, and stop working. So I felt I, I didn't want to I didn't want to do a thing because I was fucking exhausted. But um. Then I went to sleep and I woke up now at nine thirty. So, I mean, I might as well just do a podcast because otherwise I'm gonna be I'm gonna be awake for fucking midnight. Might as well make it a productive one. And you know what? Still counts as Sunday. Never said it was speared Sunday early morning. So as long as I get this shit up before midnight, it's still speared Sundays. Um, this uh, episode is also filmed again. You guys like the filmed edition of the Speared Sundays podcast, so I'm going to keep that going as often as I can. Uh, wherever I can take a camera with me, if I'm in a position to do it, I will film it. I'm glad you guys liked it and it wasn't a waste of money. So it is filmed, but you know, you don't have to watch it because I'm not really going to address the camera or anything. All right, so uh, I wanted to talk about, because last week I completely forgot to talk about uh, going to the races. I went to the races for the first time ever, man. Um, when was when did I go? I went last, yeah, last weekend. Was it last? I can't remember when I went. I think it was last weekend. No, it was last Thursday. That's when it was, right. So <laughs> I went to the races for the first time ever because we had a break from the radio for two weeks for the special and I thought, you know, I should just, I should do something other than sitting in my fucking room all day just thinking about, oh, I've got a special to do with. <laughs> so I thought, you know, I'll go, I'll go to the races. Luke invited me. He was going with a bunch of friends. So I went to the races. I went um, and I got dressed up in the only suit that I have, um, I went, I think we went to Ladies Day, Oaks Day, yeah, L Oaks Day, which is known as Ladies Day for some reason, so there's the Melbourne Cup, which is like the really big race, and then there's like the whole week before and after that, there's basically big races on every day, they make a huge deal out of it, and so I didn't want to, I didn't want to go to the actual Melbourne Cup, I think that's the filthy one, you know, that's the one where everyone gets fucked up. It's like, oh, it's the Melbourne Cup. Let's go have fun. Like, they all get fucked up. And it's 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 just a bunch of drunk women in stupid fucking hats getting pissed because they get to the races and they realize that there's nothing to do other than gamble or get fucking pissed because they don't like horses or horse racing. They just like wearing fucking dumb hats. And any woman who likes wearing a dumb hat... Uh, doesn't have enough of a personality to entertain themselves with their friends. So they just get fucking pissed. <laughs> so uh, we went to um, Oaks Day instead, which is the ladies' day. And I think um, I, I think that because that was like less... It wasn't like a... You know what it was? It was because it was... It wasn't the Melbourne Cup. Like it wasn't a big cultural event. Only people who actually wanted to see horses racing were there or gamble. So it was actually like that's what it's for. The horse racing, the Melbourne Cup and all that kind of shit. It's not about seeing horses run. It's about making as much money as possible from gambling. I mean, that's why the horses have dumb names. So that you bet on the one whose name you like the most. Like me and Luke put $50 on a horse called Lucky Louie because we thought it would be funny. Uh, and let me tell you... Lucky Louie is the most unlucky cunt on the on planet Earth because he lost, I think he came second last, so we lost 50 bucks on that one, but, you know, you, you can't win them all, and and that's that's my point, like, we only bet on that horse because he had a stupid fucking name and it amused us, like, we looked at his odds, and I think if you bet $1, you would win $80, so, uh, yeah, basically, what I'm saying is, if the horses had numbers, like if you only saw their odds, you just wouldn't gamble at all. You would only bet on the, like, like you would see, oh, you know, horse number six, he's definitely going to win because you will only get 20 cents if he does win. So obviously he's definitely going to win, right? So you wouldn't bet on number one because it's not even worth the risk. It's the payoff just is not there. And then you wouldn't bet on like the worst odd horse because why would you? 
So what they do is they just give them stupid fucking names. So idiots like me and Luke see that shit and go, oh, Lucky Louie. Oi, oi, Lewis, your name's almost Louie. Let's bet on that horse. Let's waste $50 for a fucking joke. And uh, yeah, it worked. And you know what? Every cunt there was doing that. That's, you know what? It actually kind of shocked me how much gambling there is at the races. I mean, I, that sounds like a stupid thing, but unless you've been there, it's it's actually fucking nuts. And it's not even the gambling on on the horse races that are, that are happening there. Like, I understand that because you because the horses that race that you can actually see in person, they parade them around the, the, the horse racing stadium. You can have a look at the horse. You can be like, oh, that one looks like he's fucking pumped up. This one looks really big. And you can kind of look at them and bet on them. That I understand. But how it works is there were TVs all around, like, the, the, the racetrack uh, in the inside areas where you could watch races that were not even in Melbourne. Like, they've gamed it so perfectly where I'm pretty sure in Melbourne, a race happens every half an hour and then in Sydney or another state, a race also happens every half hour, but they've worked out the time difference so that while Melbourne has no race, you can run to the TV and see Sydney's race. So... All of these people, it was fucking sad, man. There's the racetrack, there's the outside part, and that's where everyone just fucking sits and watches the races. But then there's an inside part, and it's just gambling fucking city. Like, everyone is sitting there, looking away from the racetrack, staring at fucking screens, watching races in Sydney go past. I walked I pulled, I walked past one place and it was Greyhound races. Like how much of a fucking gambling addict do you have to be to bet on Greyhounds in Adelaide when you're at in Melbourne watching fucking horses run? Like that shit is crazy and it really was like, "Oh, okay, gambling's evil like i totally understand that shit i i get why they make so much money now because when you go out for a nice night with your wife where where she wears a pretty dress and spends 150 dollars on a dumb fucking hat and then you just ditch her to watch some greyhound called fucking tim run in perth and then have a heart attack and then its owner has to shoot it <laughs> um but overall i thought i would hate it uh i, I actually quite enjoyed it i um I did quite like the the races and everything. I thought it was cool. Hang on, let me just flip this screen of the camera. It's putting me off seeing my face, my my own face. Yeah, I I really liked um the races. I genuinely thought I would hate it. I thought it, I thought there'd be too many people there. I thought it'd be fucking shit, but it was really cool. What really struck out to me is we 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 got there, right? And obviously there's security and all of that kind of shit and uh Man, every, t- every time I go through any kind of security, whether it's airport security or like arena security, racetracks, any kind of security where they're checking for bombs and shit, I just, I- I'm just like, yeah, okay, I'm going to die. I'm definitely going to die. Like there's, there's no way that you have done your job properly. I had a bag with me, like a little fucking man purse that I was cam- carrying my camera in and my wallet and all that kind of shit because my suit didn't have pockets. So I got this bag and they were checking all the women's bags and I just walked straight past and they don't even check to see if I have a bag because they go, oh, men don't have bags. So I just walked straight through and I had a bottle of water in the bag as well. So, you know, that could have been fucking nitroglycerin or whatever the fuck, but they were like, oh, he's got a dick. He's, you know, we don't have to look at his bag because, you know, and it's like, dude, every like, you should be you should be searching me like any guy who has a bag. You should look at that and be like, well, dude, why does that guy have a bag? All right, either he's a fucking loser, who <laughs> who feels the need to carry a woman's handbag around with him, or he's a terrorist. Like it's one of those two options. So I got in scot free. He didn't get checked, um, and then immediately upon walking in, you realize it's like, oh, okay, this is this is for white people. This <laughs> there would there was no one other than like. 30 plus white people there like it's a fucking white person's event everyone goes there and they pretend it's a classy event and it was just fucked and what you know what really shit me was because there's the racetrack right and it's a really long racetrack and there's grass on the other side of the barrier so they have barriers where you can stand and watch the horses race and what people would do fucking inconsiderate cunts is they would set up beach towels on the grass 
like right next to the railing where people want to stand and watch the fucking races. Like imagine if you went to see a sports game, like the football, and someone just puts a fucking towel over the top of your seats. And you're like, dude, I paid for tickets to be in this area. You can't just fucking block off a thing with a towel and then put... And then people will put out like cheese platters and and all that kind of shit. Like cheese platters and crackers and dips. And it's like, shut, fuck off, all right? Just leave, all right? This is not where you eat your fucking cheese and crackers. This is where gambling addicts go to stand at the railing and cry to the fucking sun because they just lost their home deposit on a dumb bet, all right? That's what this is for. This is not for you to sit down and have a nice little picnic and get a little bit too drunk because you don't actually give a fuck about the horses, all right? There was, and, and what got me, right, is there was so much grass. Like, there was so much fucking grass. It was a huge area. They could have put their beach towel all the way at the back where they could just sit and it wouldn't bother anyone. But instead, there was like hundreds of inconsiderate assholes that just laid the entire front row with beach towels so that they could claim an area that was just general admission but also take up way too much space. I stepped in a cheese platter. I don't give a fuck. Fuck your cheese, all right? Jarlsberg? How about Bootsberg, huh? <laughs> Eat that, you fucking inconsiderate cunt. Yeah, I stepped in someone's cheese and I thought it was great. I was like, oh my God, you stepped in our cheese. And I just said, well, don't, don't put your cheese on the ground, all right? The ground is where my feet go. The ground is not for cheese. Bring a table. Bring, sit at a picnic table. Don't fucking come here. <laughs> and st- and st- and sit on the ground in the most trafficked area and then get surprised when some tall tall fucking lanky asshole with no spatial awareness steps on your cheese platter. I'm sorry ladies, but that was your fault. I didn't say that. I just apologized, but uh in my own head I was like, yeah. That was fucking sick. I would do that again. So I was I was I was on, I was on the lookout for other cheese platters to fucking step on. <laughs> Man, we saw some women there that just just went over the top with the fucking hat thing. Like, I don't know where this came from, this cultural thing of, oh, we go to the races and we wear a big hat. It's like, why would you even do that to yourself? You know? Like, it's one thing to wear like a little fascinator, a nice little pretty thing, maybe cover half of your face with some mesh. That's kind of cool. I like that. You know, a little bit classy, a little bit sexy, kind of mysterious. I get it. You can wear a nice little fascinator. But no shit. I saw some woman that had... Like, imagine a Looney Tunes cartoon and one of those characters wearing a sombrero, right? You know how fucking big they are. Like a, like a 20-inch sombrero, circumference wide. But it was a hat. And it was a floppy hat. So this woman couldn't even see where she was going. And everyone was looking at her like a fucking idiot. And because it was so packed, she was like hitting people in the face with her hat. Everyone hated her. And, and this kind of hat would have cost her $500. And it's just like, why did you spend $500 to become a giant fucking inconvenience to yourself and everyone around you? I don't understand it. Then there, was, there were these other two women that had, that had clearly made their own hats. And it just looked like they got a bunch of fucking garbage from <laughs> from their bins and just stapled it together and put it on their heads and it was it w- like it was like a tower of of like really soft fabric and shit swaying back and forth they had to hold it together as they walked around and they were in heels and it's like dude you you don't have to do that you don't have to be the fucking dickhead hat bitches <laughs> Oh fuck! I, yeah, I don't understand. Sorry if this. Sorry if this podcast is a little bit rambly. I'm I'm really fucking tired. Um, I suppose. Uh, uh, that's why I need to see the screen so I know how long I've been going for. All right, fourteen minutes. All right. So, um, what else did I want to talk about today? Oh, that's right. You know what I saw? You know what I saw? Like a. Uh, I've got it in my phone. I've got um. I saw on Instagram like for tourism Melbourne. Some art gallery. Uh, it was it was uh, it was advertising some art gallery where you come and look at photos of old Melbourne, of how Melbourne used to be, and I thought that was kind of cool. But the way they were advertising it, they there was this one particular photo that this is how they were advertising it, like an iconic 
the the art gallery was called Iconic Melbourne Moments. I'm looking at it on my phone now, right? So that so it was like uh, just photographs of iconic things that have happened in Melbourne for the past couple of years or, or couple hundred years even. So this photo that was taken was of it was in 1985 and it was in the middle of the CBD, right in the heart of the city, outside Flinders Street, which is the main train station in Melbourne. Like, that's how everyone in Melbourne gets to work, travels in the city. It's the most important train station. Every single person that goes to the city uses that thing. And it was this photo of, from 1985, of a guy who herded 1,500 sheep outside Flinders Street Station to celebrate 150 years of sheep herding in Australia. So some fucking loser who has too much time and too many sheep on his hands was like, oh, you know how I will get everyone to give a fuck about the uh, Merino sheep industry? You know how I'm going to get everyone around the sheep industry in general and how I'm going to really get some good PR around this shit? I'm going to take 1,500 of my sheep to the fucking city and put them right outside the train station that everyone has to use to get to work, and that's it. That's all I'm going to do. I'm just going to take 1,500 sheep into the fucking city. I mean, who cares about the tram system? Who needs trams? <laughs> like, it was, it was over the top of the tram tracks, and it was like iconic moments in Melbourne history, or that one time that 1,500... That, <laughs> Like, is it really iconic Melbourne moments? Or is it that one time when some fucking psychopath brought 1,500 sheep into the city and pissed off every person? Like, that's not an iconic Melbourne moment. That's an iconic fucking asshole moment. There's nothing cool about that shit. Nobody needs to see 1,500 sheep in the city. I know what a sheep looks like. I don't need to see 1,500 of them. And I don't need to see... Like, dude, I'd be hating my way on the way to work, right? It's Imagine this. Like, it's fucking 8.30 in the morning, you've been on the train for an hour, you woke up at six in the morning, you're already fucked, you don't want to go to work, you hate your job, the train is packed, you got on the train, you couldn't find a seat, so you're sitting there, you can't even read, what is it, 1985, you can't even read the fucking newspaper because it's too big, it's like, it's like wider than your shoulders, and then you're on the train for an hour standing up, you're fucked, you didn't eat breakfast properly, you get off the train and you're like, all right, time to go to the job that I hate. And then you just step outside of the train station and you're just greeted by 1,500 fucking sheep that are confused because they've never seen this many people in their life or trams or cars. And then there's this, there's this one fucking smelly farmer going, hey guys, it's 150 years of uh, sheep. So, ta-da! Like, dude, I would knock that cunt out for sure. <laughs> you don't need that shit. Oh, man. I think this one's going to be a bit of a short podcast, guys, because I just don't have too much to talk about, and I'm absolutely fucked, and I don't want to just ramble on about sheep and what I did two weeks ago. So I am going to cut this one a bit short. So I don't know. I'll, we'll go for. We'll try and go for about 40 minutes, guys. We're about halfway through, all right? How's that sound? Hang on, I've got to get some fucking water. Um, all right, now that we're halfway through, uh, it's time to do the, uh, time to talk about the Dollar Shave Club. The, uh, very first sponsor of the Speared Sunnies podcast has returned. They, uh, they liked my first reading a couple of weeks ago and they're, they're back for more. So I have the script here and I'm going to attempt to read it word for word because I don't know if they're going to stay on the fucking podcast, I might as well do a good job. Okay. But this doesn't, this just doesn't sound like me, man. Like the script they're doing, it you you know what you can tell it's been written by an American. That's what this is, okay. That's why it sounds so weird. Me reading this shit is because you can tell that it's been fucking written by an American. All right, here we go, guys. I've got the answer to finally make your life so much easier. Since jo- I can't do that. <laughs> uh, since joining DollarShaveClub.com, I don't need to choose between price and quality to get an amazing shave anymore. DollarShaveClub.com is a no-brainer for, incre- for an incredible shave delivered right to your door. Um, Dollar Shave Club delivers high-quality razors right to my home for less than what I used to pay. That's actually true, man. 
uh, because they sent me razors for free. <laughs> uh, but no, I looked up the prices. It actually is cheaper than what I would pay for the fucking shitty razors. Like those shitty, like, like you get 18 of those fucking horrible razors and then you think you're saving money because you get 18 of them, but then they all, they all have like half a use and then they die on you. And then you go through the bag really quick and they get all rusty and they're just shit. And it's, I don't know, it was like Dollar Shave Club was my first time using some actual fucking good razors. And uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't go back. I actually would use, that wasn't part of the script. Sorry, I need to stay the fucking on this thing. Uh, there's no reason to deal with the hassle of going to the store to buy expensive razors when you join the club. They capitalize like the T and the C, the club. <laughs> Just go to dollarshaveclub.com and pick a razor that works for you from their lineup of amazing blades. That's all there is to it. I get a first class shave with my executive razor. That was underlined and in quotation marks, so I'm going to do that. Executive razor. Uh, and when I use it with their Dr. Carver's shave butter, the blade just gently glides for the smoothest shave imaginable. Dude, I tried that shave butter shit and it, it doesn't foam up. You know when you when you shave and you've tried shaving foam and there's like foam and you're like, fuck yeah, I feel like a man, there's foam. But when I use this Carver Shave Butter stuff, it didn't foam up and initially I was like, oh, this doesn't work. <laughs> I was like, where's the foam? You can't shave without the foam. But then I actually used it and it it's the same. Like you, you don't need the foam. All the foam does is get in the way. It makes it impossible to see. I, I realize that I'm pretty sure this foam shit is just a scam by all of the other shaving companies to make you feel like you're getting a better shave, but in reality, it just means you can't see what you're fucking doing. Like, if you think about it, you don't need foam. What do you need it for? All you need is actual lubricant so you don't fuck up your face and cut it. The foam is just there to make you feel like a man. So, you know... I just exposed a fuck a, a massive scam within the shaving business here, thanks to Dollar Shave Club. Um, but I'm getting off track because here's your chance to see why over three million members like me love Dollar Shave Club. Right now, you can get your first month of the club for as little as five dollars. After that, it's just a few bucks a month. Dollar Shave Club is so confident in the quality and value of all, that was in caps, their products. There's no long-term commitment or any hidden fees. There's no reason not to join. Um, no, I won't say a reason. <laughs> uh, get yours at dollarshaveclub.com slash spearhead. That's, dollar shave, that's dollarshaveclub.com slash spearhead spearhead so yeah if you use that link guys make sure you actually do slash spearhead because it does help me out that way they can know that it's actually working and yeah um it act it does work like i i use the dollar shave club before my comedy special both nights so you know if if i'm if i'm confident enough to 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 use them before i tape my comedy special i mean I, it'll be all right for you to shave your fucking pubes all right <laughs> before you see that girl that doesn't actually want to have sex with you all right so that's that done. Dollarshaveclub.com slash spearhead. Um, <clears throat> so I, sh I suppose I should talk about the comedy special and the, and the, the nights. Um, man, I just, I'm so zen about it. I uh, honestly, Friday and Saturday night were definitely the two best performances of my life in, in front of, not, and that wasn't just to do with me. It was also in front of the two best crowds I've ever performed to ever like the I was really worried because the whole place was fitted out with lights and with cameras and there'd be camera people walking around throughout the theater that that you guys were in the audience would get all locked up and self-conscious with which does happen sometimes but man I've never played to a more supportive crowd and it was just it was just incredible like everyone was everyone was everyone wanted to have a good night and even though it was. I was also nervous because it was the first time that I had ever repeated material. Um, I, if you've seen me a few times, you know that every single year I write a new hour of material. I don't repeat jokes. But for my comedy special, I picked the best 20 minutes from the last three shows. So it was stuff that I would say maybe 60 or 70% of the audience had heard before, at least some of it. I think 
my earlier shows, a lot of people hadn't heard any of that stuff because, you know, I didn't sell many tickets in my first couple of years of comedy. But especially from the material that I used from this year's tour, Try and Stop Me, like there was a, heaps of people had heard it before, but it was like, people were just excited to hear it again. Like it was so, it was such a relief that I got in there. I was like, oh, fucking thank the Lord, people want to hear this shit again because I was nervous about it because, you know, Americans, because America is so big, right? Americans can do 50 dates in a row and that's just one city in every state. That's not even like, yeah, like, and their states have, might maybe have five major cities that's so big. So they can do the show 50 times in a row and then on the 50th show, they'll tape the comedy special then. So they don't have to think about anyone seeing their material before because they just they just do that show last. But with with Australia, because really we only have five cities that are that are big enough to to sell enough tickets to uh, make it look like a comedy special. Like you do Melbourne, Sydney, Brisbane, Adelaide, and Perth, and those five are like the the really big cities where you can get you know, 500 to 1,000 people in a theater to see you. Um, so I did it in Melbourne where, you know, that's where most of my people come see my shows because it's my hometown and it's kind of where I started. But I was super happy with it. And uh, yeah, I, I, I don't have anything to say about it. Like, I'm just so, I'm so happy with how it went, how the shows went, how the people in the crowd were. Um, I, on Saturday, we had a really bad heckler before I got up on stage he was a fucking, one of those fucking idiots that just don't get it. They, would like, like, I don't mind participation. I, I actually don't, I told the MC not to tell people not to heckle um, because I don't mind participation during my shows. Like, if, if one, if, you know, maybe throughout the whole hour, three people yell out one thing each and I respond to that and it's like, and, and then that's done. I don't mind that. I don't care. I think it's kind of funny. Um, and it encourages, and I like, I like people joining in, you know, but when one cunt just yells out shit again and again and again, that was this, what this fucking idiot was doing. Um, he ruined the MC set. He yelled out multiple times. He almost killed Luke's set. Like Luke didn't get through a single joke without uh, being interrupted, which sucks because his set was being filmed as well. And you can't cut around a heckler if they yell out something in the middle. And it's not like you can put up a set where some fucking retard just yells out dumb shit multiple times in a row. And even the audience was yelling at him to shut up. Like I heard someone yell, you're ruining the show and this fucking idiot just didn't get it. It's like, I, d I don't understand how you can be that selfish. But um, like we almost kicked him out. I, I, was, I was that close to texting the security and saying, get this fucking idiot out before I get on stage. But I don't know. The MC Doug Chapel ended up just being like, like you know, it's it's yelling shit out. It's fine, but when you have to, when it gets to the point where no joke, he had done it at least ten, maybe fifteen times before I had even gotten on stage. That was in in about half an hour, ten or fifteen times. When it gets to that point where you have to stop the show and say, "Hey, man, you need to stop that because it's disrespectful." Like, that's, that sucks. No one wants to do that shit. So, yeah, anyone, if you... And, it, yeah, I understand that it's exciting being at a show and you can yell something out and, and, and then you can kind of get an interaction with the act and then you feel a little bit special and excited. But it's like... Ha, like, at the same time, show some fucking respect. You can't yell out 15 times. But anyway, that was the only negative note and thankfully that guy shut up when I got on stage because I think he yelled out something right as soon as I got on stage and I heard him and I was like, I cannot kick you out. Like the first joke, the first thing that I say on my comedy special cannot be, all right, security, get this fucking asshole out of here. I don't want him in this. <laughs> like that can't be the first thing that I say. So I just ignored him the first thing that he yelled out and he thankfully he didn't yell out anything uh, for the rest of the night, because I was I was so ready to be like, get this cunt out of here. I had it fucking locked and loaded. There was security at the back, ready to go. They knew it was a problem to get him out there, but 
thankfully he didn't yell out anything during my set on the Saturday night and um I yeah I did just one of the best sets in my life I feel like on Friday it was it was a really really good show but at the same time I was so focused on nailing my jokes that I was a little bit in my own head like I wasn't exactly living in the moment and 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 uh being entirely present I was a little bit in my head because I was so focused on getting the jokes out and um Friday was an awesome show. It was pretty much word perfect. But then I got out on Saturday and I walked on stage thinking, I remember thinking, I can fuck this up and it won't matter at all. And that thought just made me relax and made me perform better because I wasn't freaking out about stumbling words or messing up a punchline or anything like that. I just went out there and I had fun and I was like, this is a write-off we might not even use tonight. And uh, I think Saturday night was was the show. Everyone who saw Friday and Saturday was like, yeah, that was the one. So um, <clears throat> we'll see how it comes together in the edit. Um, but yeah, I just, I, I was worried after the show like I had I had this little thought before I performed the shows that fuck man what if you don't what if you uh feel like like I've been thinking about this for 3 years and I had this thought like shit when it's done what if I'm like what do I do now you know what I mean like what if I'm what if I feel I don't know empty but I I just didn't I was like I did that shit I I just felt really fucking happy and I was like yeah I did that and well we did that you know it was it, it wasn't just me it was like everyone who helped me everyone who filmed it everyone who performed and then and then you guys who watched my shit and who pledged to the crowdfund and made it possible i was like we fucking did this shit um and now i'm just so excited for the next thing i'm and uh i'm really excited to take a bit of a break from stand up um and smash out videos like i'm excited i i've just my head is clear that's what I feel like. Like my whole head is clear. I don't have this massive giant project that I've been planning for three years hanging over my head um, that has been like, you know, in the background for so long. Like even my first show, my second show, my third show, in my mind, I'm thinking, all right, this has to be good because some of it is going to go into the special that I'm going to do in three years. <clears throat> so I was just so fucking wrapped with it so thank you to everyone who came thank you to everyone who pledged and um the release date for it will be announced soon it'll probably come out it'll come out early next year i'm not going to put it out now because i can already tell that people are sick of me talking about this thing so um after today i'm done talking about the comedy special um i might mention a few little i'll, I'll, I'll keep everyone on the indiegogo page updated with it but um outside of that i might talk about it a little bit on the podcast but I don't know, probably not. I think I'm just going to let it sit because uh, I can tell that people are sick of me talking about this shit. And I am as well. It's been so fucking long. The crowdfund, then selling the tickets, then doing the special. It's, yeah. Um, But uh, with that being said, I'm so, I'm just so zen about it. So thank you to everyone who came. Um, All right. With that, um, oh, that being said, this shit me, right? After... Just before the Saturday show, right, this, this is what I wanted to talk about. This is what I've been excited to yell about. So, um, Saturday morning, I went to a cafe um, just because I'm, I'm quite a solitary person and when I do shows and then I meet everyone after, I'm like, I need to be alone. Like, uh, you know, you meet 300 people and, and, and you have conversations with them and they throw all this emotional energy at them and don't get me wrong, I fucking love it. But, I, but after that, it's like I need to be alone to just, you know, get myself together because I'm not naturally a person who likes talking to heaps of fucking cunts. Um, so on Saturday morning, I was like, I, I sent my girlfriend home. I was like, I'm sorry, babe. I want to be alone. So I stayed at the hotel <coughs> and then um, Saturday morning, I got up to go to a cafe just to some local place in St. Kilda. Uh, I didn't really know the area. I just went to the first cafe that I found and it was like this, you know, it's fucking classic trendy hipster cafe. Um, and... <laughs> I get in there and there's this dude, right? No, I get in there, I sit down, I order, and uh, then this this old guy, like 40-year-old dude, walks in and uh, he's wearing like a, a, just a shirt, like a button-up shirt, one of those really loose button-up shirts that's just too loose, man. Like, come on, bro, you're 40, I can see a skeleton. Tighten that, wear something else. You know one of those fucking shirts, like it's like the 70s and they think they're some jacked, 
fucking 70s porn star or James Bond from the 80s and they on the beach and it's like dude you, you look like you look like a fucking cancer patient either wear a hoodie or don't just don't wear just don't wear those button ups man all right i wouldn't wear a button up i wouldn't do that to you guys okay there's no way i would do that shit i have i have i have some respect for people around me so this guy walks in and he's wearing this fucking loose button up with the too many button too many buttons undone okay it wasn't that hot and you're not you're not jack dude and then he had this giant um button celebrating the same sex marriage thing so it's so i was like oh here we go this is a guy who uh needs everyone to know what he thinks and it's like dude i also agree with the same sex marriage thing but it's like i'm not going to go around wearing like i don't th- i don't think fucking babies should be murdered but i'm not going to wear a giant badge being like hey don't murder babies it's like yeah we all know man you don't have to wear your fucking opinions on your t-shirt i hate that shit it's like it's it's to me that stuff is just as bad as fucking those dumb t-shirts that that with slogans on them like i saw some some other guy in uh in St. Kilda and he had a giant beard and he was wearing a t-shirt that said talk to the beard and it's like bro okay that's when you know you don't have a personality when you when you make your life about your fucking beard that'd be like me wearing a t-shirt being like yes I'm 6 foot 8 no I don't play basketball it's like fucking don't man it's like you don't need to wear a fucking t-shirt that just points out a physical attribute about you it's like well, yeah we can see your dirty homeless beard and it's not impressive. Get a personality. Get a hobby. Do something else. Anyway, so this guy fucking sits down next to me. And I'm sitting there. I'm psyched. I haven't talked to anyone. I ordered my food and that was it. <clears throat> and then he sits down to ne- next to me. He's by himself as well. And he's wearing Crocs. So I'm like, oh, here we go. He's wearing a, <laughs> wearing a fucking badge with an opinion on it and Crocs. This guy's a dickhead. And uh, then he takes his Crocs off at the cafe. And he's got no socks on like some kind of animal. And then he sits up like cross-legged in that yoga position, you know where they put their feet up on their hips, you know that one? So he's just pointing his fucking dirty sockless croc feet at me and we're on the same bench. It's one of those cafes where it just has a bench like from one end of the wall to the other and then tables that are separate. So he's just pointing his dirty croc feet at me and I'm just looking at them. I'm like, that's fucking gross. I don't want to look at that shit while I'm eating. And then he looks at me and he sees me like giving dirty eyes to his dirty feet and he goes hey man how you going you know that fucking click noise i can't even do it that fucking i don't even know that that sh- any any person who does that is a wanker like you like see you later man and they go like shut up all right anytime any, i want to slap that fucking click it out of their mouth i hate that shit anyone who does and you know what you know what i think i figured out why i hate that stuff because you have to decide to do it you have to decide to learn how to do it. Like it's not like that. I, that's I, I, I'm not, I'm not, I know I'm not making the noise, but you know the fucking noise. And and I, I realized that I can't do it. And that's when I was like, oh shit, you have to decide to learn how to do that so you can do that because you think that it's cool. It's one of those deliberate social interactions that people do because they think it makes them cool. Like a wink, like like that that wink shit. That's what gets me as well. I hate winking. And I hate that click noise. What else do I hate? That's but basically those two things because you have to decide to learn how to do that shit. Not not so much with winking, but because it's not a natural action, you have to decide to do it. You'd be like, give him a wink, and or some anyone who winks and clicks, like, like that's a fucking loser. So he does that to me, and I'm like, all right, cool. So he's done the fucking thing, and he's wearing Crocs, and he's got his dirty feet on the fucking bench. I'm sitting there trying to focus on my food and then he talks to me (laughs) no my food hasn't got here right and then he tries to talk to me and I literally just ignored him I just didn't say anything and then he starts reading the newspaper and then uh he orders something and then my food arrives and this is after 10 minutes of silence we've not talked to each other I've already ignored him once and my food arrives and he looks at me and he goes bon appetit how about bon don't talk to me huh how about Bond shut up? How about Bond shut the fuck up? Okay? I don't want to talk to you. I'm not your mate. You're 40 years old. You're wearing a fucking button up that isn't buttoned up. You got your dirty croc feet on my fucking bench, pointing them at me while I'm trying to eat my porridge. All right? How about Bond don't say Bon Appetit to a stranger? How about Bond go home? Bond shut up. Bond and fuck off, all right? Good. Okay? Just, I don't know. 
I feel like if I wasn't so tired, I could do 15 minutes on this cunt, but <laughs> I think we're getting towards the end of the podcast. But <clears throat> before we do that, guys, I'm going to do the worst part of the podcast because I think I had a funny email come into me recently. Um, yeah, sorry about sorry about this um, episode if I wasn't... Hang on, I've just got to type in my fucking password here. Is that it? I bet it's not. Oh, I got it. All right. Okay. So, yeah, sorry about this podcast. It was a little bit rambly. I'm so tired. Um, all right. Where are we? Here we go. Um, oh, this will be good. Your podcast got me in trouble at work. Please keep me anon. G'day, cunt. For the purposes of this email, call me Jerome. You see, that's perfect. That's exactly what I want. Don't say my name's Tim, but call me Jerome because I'm just going to call you Tim. I've got a no tolerance tolerance. I'm going to read exactly what you fucking write. So you better nail this, guys. This guy didn't, yeah, this guy didn't even tell me his real name. So I don't even know. Okay, perfect. Uh, call me Jerome. I'm not asking for advice here. I just thought you'd appreciate this story. I love a good story. Okay, where are we? particularly as it involves your podcast getting my hours docked at work. (laughs) I work at a liquor store in Diamond Creek, aka Country Victoria. Let's call it SWB. I listen to the podcast on the drive over from home whenever it drops, and given the potty is usually longer than my commute, I usually have half a podcast left while working. Last Sunday, while working the clothes, I accidentally left my phone in my pocket. Somehow, the screen activated, and my car keys just happened to be in the perfect place to hit the play button on the podcast. Just as an old lady walked in, I hear your voice on full volume shouting about having sex in the bush. (laughs) (laughs) The old lady must have thought it was me who said that because she promptly left the store. And as store feedback comes back on Wednesdays, my manager got wind of this today and put me on disciplinary action, reducing me to three hours a week. Miscellaneous bit at the end may not have given me cancer, but it certainly has fucked up my bank account for the next month at least. <laughs> Cheers for the laughs, mate. I've been following your stuff since the new controlling days, and I'm looking forward to more. Can't wait for the special. Have a shit one. Fuck. Man, Jerome, that is hilarious. I'm sorry about that. But you see, that's the repercussions of having sex in a bush. Some other guy gets his hours docked because he listened to a story about it. Oh, that's fucking hilarious. Thank you very much for that, Jordan. Sorry about get, getting your hours docked. Um, all right, I could do more, but I'm just too tired. Um, yeah, sorry about this episode if it was a little bit rambly. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, it's 10 o'clock at night at this point. I'm really tired. Uh, I'm going to go back to sleep after this. But I thought I, after the comedy special, like, I couldn't just leave you guys without a podcast. I, I said I would try and do one. So I'm a man of my word. So, yep, this uh, podcast will be up at about, I don't know, 10.30 or 11 uh, on iTunes. I don't know if the video is going to be up on Sunday because I'm at home and my internet is shit. Like I want, like the if I was at the radio station, this shit would upload in about 20 minutes. But here, it's like an hour long video file. It's like five gigs. So I don't know if it's going to be up on YouTube. But if not, it'll be up Monday. I don't know, sometime on Monday. All right. So thank you very much for listening. That is the Speared Sundays podcast. Thank you so much to everyone who came to the special. Everyone who pledged. Um. I just, just everything. You, you know how much this means to me, and uh, I'm just, and I'm, you know what? I'm so confident that it was the best performance of my life. It couldn't have gone any other way. I was worried that I would get off stage and be like, "Fuck, I didn't do this, or I messed up that, or I didn't go for long enough." But you know, it was just brilliant. So thank you very much. Um, and uh, next episode, it'll be in episode 92. We're getting close to episode 100, guys. It's time to talk about what's going to happen on episode 100. What are we going to do? Hey, actually, send me some suggestions. What do you think we should do for episode 100? Write it in the podcast group. Send me an email, podcast at loosebeers.com. Do whatever you want. Let me know what should we do for episode 100 because that's a fucking big deal. So yeah, let me know. Episode 100, what should we do? Um, dollarshaveclub.com slash spearhead. And uh, give me a rating on iTunes. I will see you very soon. I'm having a little bit of a rest, a bit of a break. I might not put a video out this week, but uh, I am on radio tomorrow. So the Luke and Lewis show is back. And uh, yeah, I'll talk to you very soon, guys. Have an incredibly shit one.